First of all, when you read Revelation chapter 20, it's always good to start from the beginning in chapters so that you don't get misinformed about who you're talking about and in which time you're talking. Preachers are very good at telling people to jump in the middle of a quote. Let's start and see what it says. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. Now, we're speaking again of the same angel that came down out of heaven, carried Michael, who had conquered the devil, which we find in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Okay? And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, or Satan, and bound him a thousand years. If you read Revelation 12, you see that. 12, 7, straight to 9. Okay? Now, this is to happen. This has not happened yet. That's the original question, right? This is yet to happen. But under what terms will happen? First, and cast him, meaning the devil, into the bottom of his pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, which is the seal of Solomon, the shield of David, which is the six-pointed star. That's the thing that locks the devil away, that symbol you requested about, that the brothers lay on their finger, which is the six-pointed star and crescent, is a combination of the seal of David and Solomon, the crescent and the star. That he should deceive the nations no more, because in 18 of Revelations, they speak about how the devil and the harlot together had deceived all the nations by the lapse of the fornications of the harlot and let them live deliciously in her and by that they will all be cast into fire brimstone till the thousand years should be fulfilled. That means he will protect his followers for a thousand years. This is Michael who is in the image of Christ, the son of man. He said, I will send my angel if I want people keep mistaking the book of Revelations to be Jesus. And Jesus said, I will send my angel in the likeness of the Son of Man. So everybody will think he's Christ. Now let's go on. And after that, he must be loosed for a little while, for a short period of time. Now, this after, 144,000 people have been raised. Alright? This is the first one. And then the devil will be locked away himself, the serpent. That's a razzle or eblis. That does not mean that his demons will not be about to work in the world. He himself will be locked in the bottom of the pit by 
by way of Michael. While the 144,000 are taken to another plane, elevated, it will say taken up, and they're being groomed to become Christ's light, so that when they return into the world for the people of the second death or the second resurrection, because the first resurrection will be the first fruits of them that were dead, and the second resurrection will be the people that's left behind. Okay, we'll go on. And I saw a throne, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Christ. He saw in his vision the disciples of Jesus, the Messiah, who had died in his name because of what they believed. Yes, as he was persecuted after righteous name's sake, for his is the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said. Immediately after Jesus the Messiah left, his disciples started being persecuted by the Romans and the Greeks and Paul and James and different men that adhered to Jesus' teachings, migrated to different parts of the world and was either crucified, was hung upside down, was many things, they were tortured. Okay? And for the word of God, and that's for the declaration of Shahada, the what meaning that they believe in the oneness, Tawheed, of the Creator is why they persecuted him. For not just because of Christ, but because of Christ and Tawheed, because they believed that Jesus was the Messiah and that he was sent from one God and not there many Roman gods or there many statues or deities that they set up. And which had not worshipped the beast. These are the people who did not fall victim to the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark. Now this takes us back to Daniel 9 and 7, or it takes us into Revelation 14, which speaks about those people who will receive the mark of the beast. Not only will they receive the mark of the beast, but they'll also receive his image. And this is what I spoke to you about last week, when I spoke of people who are beginning to try to look like white people. When people are starting to alter their noses, when different people are altering their faces, they're trying to live in the image of what Revelations 13 describes as the horror. Everybody is trying to look British. Everybody is trying to look German. All the punk rocks and all the styles that are coming over, people are not just practicing and getting the mark of the beast on their hand. And they're not just changing all the currency of the world over to this system and everybody living by the credit card, but every place you go, if you go to Mexico today, you find people in Mexico trying to look like Americans. If you go to Egypt today, people are taking off the garbs of the Egyptians and they're trying to dress like Americans. If you go to Palestine today, you find people are taking off their garbs of the Palestinians and they start trying to look like Americans. If you go to Arabia, Sudan, and any part of the world today, notice that everybody in every part of the world has laid down their culture and have taken on the image of the beast and his culture, which is under the symbol of the eagle according to the four beasts of Revelation and of course Matthew 24 when it speaks of the eagle. You follow? So people have got the mark of the beast because they worship him. People are now worshiping the beast and his image and got the mark by way of worshiping him and his image and that is money that you buy nor sell no more indeed. People are so caught up on accumulation of wealth and material things, buy or sell no more, that they receive the mark of the beast because they worship him. Now people are trying to live and look like him all over the world. Okay, after the thousand years is up. Okay, so basically after, after the year 2000, he was, his reign is up and his people will still be here for the chaos. And after that thousand years, then what happens to our people? And we still be in the community, we still be existing as a community. What community? This community. No. This community is going to leave this plane and be taken up to the next one. Okay. The people left behind are the ones that's going to suffer. Just like the whirlwind that came and took Elijah away. You know the book of Ezekiel? Where the 24 elders and the four beasts will come and let you see it if you read on. Right? Let's read on to 20 and see what happens. Okay? Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. What is the second death? The second death is after man has been resurrected and been judged it says that man will die and then he'll be brought back to life for judgment. That is the day of resurrection. 
that certain man that will be brought back to life and live an eternal life with Jesus the Messiah. They will inherit the same eternal life that was given to them in the tree of the God, the tree of life. They will go back and partake of that state where they was in the garden eternally. You follow? But other people who have worshipped the devil in his image, they will be cast into a lake of fire with him. That is the second death. They will go back into purgatory to be in eternal damnation with the devil. The second death. Watch. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. They have been grown now to become priests. The same way Christ was groomed to become a priest after the order of Melchizedek as you find in the books of Hebrews chapter 5 and 6. That Jesus himself was made after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is the Hebrew of Melchizedek, the angel of justice, which is the same angel Michael who is the angel who has the power to defeat Satan. This is the angel Jesus used when Satan tried to tempt him and he said, get behind me Satan for it is written. You see, he used the power of Michael because that was his guiding angel. Okay, because Michael was the captain of the angels, as it says in Joshua 5.15. He was the captain of the angels who taught them how to bring down the walls of Jericho. And in Revelation, he's the one who brought the beast down. Okay, he's the one. So these, these people who follow him now will enter priesthood and become after the order of Melchizedek, like Jesus and of Christ and be considered Christ-like, his messiahs to the world, saviors, a lot of they do. And shall reign with him a thousand years, they shall be with him a thousand years, out of this state now, okay? And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Right after that period, the devil himself, who was an angel or a Zazo or Zahra or Lucifer, he is, remember, an angel. He will be let loose at the end. Because the whole thing is that he is trying to get revenge on Adam's seed because Adam's seed made him get cast out of the garden. Because he said that he was going to take the throne of heaven. He said he would rise up and control all of heaven. And he would do about the principalities of He's not just blood. If you read in Ephesians 6.12, you follow that? This is the power of Satan. And he was mad at man because man caused him to be cast out of the heaven when he was one of the highest of all the heaven angels, which you find in Ezekiel 28, 13, and 14. He classified himself as one of the head of the angels who was cast back out of man's fault, and now he was angry that he told God that he can prove that man is not worthy to be in heaven eternally. And he will prove it. And this is Satan's whole purpose. To prove that mortals are not worthy of everlasting life. And so he set out. And let's go ahead and read Revelation 8. And shall go out to deceive the nations which were in the four corners or quarters of the earth. God, America, and Magog, Russia. To gather them together to battle the number of whom it has the seed of the sand. The Ezekiel again, 88.2, tells us about this host of this battle in this world. And they went up on the break of the earth, they went to the highest point on the earth, and encompassed the camp of the saints. Now they're coming out above the highest point on the earth, and they're coming out against the saints, which is the, now the priest after the order of Melchizedek, who was reigning with Christ and had been groomed to come back. Now the devil and his host is coming out against them. Okay? And they went up on the brink of the earth, and encompassed the camps of the saints, about, all about them. And the beloved city, that the new city of peace, the new Jerusalem, Zion, and fire came down from God out of heaven to devour them. And the Almighty sent down the fire that he promised he would in the time of Noah when he said, I shall no longer destroy the world by water, but moreover by fire. The Almighty Creator is going to send fire down out of heaven to devour Satan's host. You follow that? That means his army, not him. His army. Remember, he's still an angel of light. Powerful monster too. And the devil that deceived them was cast into a lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet 
which includes the beast, which is the highest and all of the empires that came out of the beast, of the highest and the seven heads and the ten horns, with their commonwealth uh, market. You know about the commonwealth market form that the Greeks joined them in 1979? And the devil that deceived them was cast into a lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet, that is the one that will come as Christ, the Christ said, Beware this man who comes in my name, saying he's Christ, and he's not, and shall be tormented day and night for how long? Forever and ever. It will never end, the tormentation. Okay? Now, and I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. People were afraid of him. Right? And there was found no place for them. People, they saw the heavens open, and they saw the face, and people, people turned away to try to escape him, but there was no place to run and hide from him. Okay? And I saw the dead, small and great, be they king or slave, stand before God, and the book was opened. And another book was opened. Now make note, and the book was opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. Okay? Now we have two scrolls mentioned here. One is the book of life, and the other are the books of judgment. The first book is the book of judgment. The second is the book of life. Whose name you see? Which is the book of life. And the dead was judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. You see that? And those who resurrected will be judged by either whether or not their name was entered into the book of life because they were the part of the first resurrection or by their actions and deeds in the second resurrection. You follow the books of deeds. Because many people have died who have not been a part of the resurrection. Your great grandmothers and then have died while being taken into slavery without even ever knowing who they were or where they came from. They will be judged out by their deeds, not by whether or not their name is in the book of life. There is a difference. People who are Christians, who are Christians by true faith, forget the preacher who misteaches them, but the Christian who is a Christian by true faith cannot be classified a sinner because he does not or she does not know. He'll be judged and she'll be judged by his deeds. How good they were with people, how they lived with people, how they helped people, humans. They will not be judged by the law. But you who know the truth will be judged by the law. And you shall hear it, it says. Whether or not you bow is up to you. 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in it. Or in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. After the judgment, after everybody is judged, then the Almighty forecloses on hell and judgment. There will never be another judgment and there will never be another hell. But the righteous are now separated from the wicked. Those who follow the devil and the beast and those who follow the Messiah Christ will be separated and the one who goes to hell will go into according to the Bible hell forever and ever for following that devil and those who go to Christ will reign and inherit everlasting life and be Christ-like as a high priest after the order of Melchizedek and sit on the right side of the throne of the Father we go on with 15 and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast where? what does it say? The lake of fire. They were cast into the lake of fire. Which is where who was that? Hey, tell me. I I've been telling you, tell me. I preach so much my voice is gone. Tell me. The lake of fire. Now let's go on. See, it's good when you read the scriptures from verse to verse, from the beginning to the end, instead of jumping in. Does it make more sense this way? Now let's go right on to 21 and see what happens after this. So this is what's beautiful, but I made it sound like, oh boy, we're going to get burnt up, we're going to get this, we're going to get punched, we're going to get thrown in the house. You know, we start, we start thinking that the Almighty don't care. No, 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 no. Read the next one, and you'll see how each chapter proceeds to give us our warning that now look what he says on 21. And I saw a new heaven 
on a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. And there was no more sea. You see that? There's no more lake of fire for people to be cast into. There's a new world coming, a new world order, a new heaven and a new earth. Why is there a new heaven and a new earth? Because the domain of the Almighty and the domain of His creatures will always be separate. You understand that? The domain of the Almighty and the domain of His creatures will always be separate. You will reign with Him. You will not reign as Him. Let's go on. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. When you say Jerusalem, you're saying city of peace. Salam alaikum. Muslim. One is of peace. Jesus said, and I repeat, Bless are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Didn't he say that? Now he was standing in the midst of his disciples, and he did not say, Bless are you, peacemakers, for you are the children of God. No. He spoke in a future tense. He said, Bless are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, who do we call the children of God? Christians or Muslims? Muslims. He said, peacemaker, salam, in his language. You understand? Okay. Again, two. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Muslims, the new city, the reformed Muslim, coming down from where? Where did I tell you they took them? He took them up to another state, right? Yeah. Heaven in the scriptures is Samaria, above. And they say Sama, they mean sky. When they say Samaria, they mean heavens above. When they say Sama, they mean sky. So when you see heaven, it always means above, above earth. Now they're speaking of them coming after the new world is formed, the new world order. They're doing what now? This is the 134,000 and the 12 that each of them have chosen are coming again in the new city of these, which will be the whole world, the new world's order. What do you say? Uh, and they were prepared. Prepared as the bride is going for her husband. What does that mean? The earth was made ready for us to come in and do what? What did a, a bride do? Amen. Welcome this husband that they do what? Produce after their time, the Bible says. The earth has been made as a bride. The city of Jerusalem is symbolic of the bride of the Messiah. But in it will more of himself come out. You follow that? The bride gives birth to the son and the daughter, a reproduction of the father and the mother. Well, the reason why they call the city Jerusalem the bride of Christ is because in that city they will manufacture, for lack of a better word, more Christ-like beings. You understand? Okay, you want me to stop or you have a question you want me to go on? No, why don't you go on. Okay. And then it goes on three. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, behold means look. The what? The tabernacle of God. The tabernacle of God is now with men. That's right. The tabernacle has come back down to earth. The angels are saying, Now look. The tabernacle, the sacred place, is now with men. It's in heaven with men again. You see that? And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them. And be their God. You see that? Because he is the light and the life of the tabernacle. The spirit that's in everyone that comes into the world. When he is born again. When he is saved and reproved of sin in righteousness, then the Spirit of the Almighty moves in him. He has the Holy Ghost. Mentioned in the Quran also, though Muslims never see it. And God shall wipe away the tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. You see that? You know this is not earth. Not just earth, I mean. There will be no more dying. Neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. You understand now what happened? Isn't it beautiful that we really followed it through? 
This is what we're working for. And we get spat on because we wear long white robes and they call us sisters fools because they put veils on their face. They call us crazy because we call out those Muslims. They say we're antichrist and we laugh because we are his followers and they're antichrist. <laughs> but we know we're looking forward to this prophecy to come true for us. And it's worth waiting for us. A lot better waiting to get a pension and a gold watch. <laughs> then go on to five. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. You see that? And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful, which means can be trusted, subject. You understand? This is al haq wa subject. It's a fact beyond any doubt, and it can be trusted. This is going to happen. And he said unto me, It is done. It is over, right? I am Alpha, Alex, and Omega. Yes. I am the first and I am of the last. I am al awwal and al akhir The first and the last. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the first of the fountain of the water of life freely. That's called Kofar. The fountain that's in heaven is called Kothar. That's the degree that you have to read further into the Quran to find out because this, it wasn't explained in the Torah. The fountain of life. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. That means the things that man is entitled to when he was originally in the garden. If he overcomes all, if he makes it to this point, he will inherit all things. And I will be his what? God. And he will be my son. Jesus said, Bless out of peacemakers, for they shall be called the mm -hmm. See, all people will become then in that place the sons of God again. You see it? You follow that? If you want, we'll go to Revelation 18 and see what happens. If any of y'all want to walk, you got to walk through the Bible. Let your fingers do the walk and everything. All right. Okay. Let's go to 18, everybody. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power and glory, and the earth was lit up or lightened with his glory. That backed up in the 71st and the third part of Ezekiel, the 40th and the 43rd and the second verse. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become an inhabitant of what? Of, of devil. Of devil, not of the devil. I keep saying it because people are under the the devil is some guy with a pitchfork walking around by himself. No, it's in order for a place to become inhabited by the devil, inhabited means to live there, to reside there, to stay there. These are the devils walking and talking, like he said in Job 1 when questioned. What were you doing? He said, walking to and fro in the earth, causing development. Okay? And the whole of every foul spirit. That means foul spirit is uh, what they call Holy Spirit, of course, right? And as Revelation 12 said, the bad angels fell from heaven, then there must be also what kind of spirit? Unholy spirit or foul spirit. You follow that? So they're talking about the devil in the physical form and the devil in the spiritual sense. Both inhabit this city here in the day, in Babylon. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. The symbols of this country. The eagle, the sphinx, the hawk, the buzzard. These are symbols of death. Read upon them. Read, up, just read on the lifestyle of an eagle. It'll amaze you why a person would take an eagle as a symbol if you just study what the bald eagle does. Now listen close to this. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of the fornication. You see that? Of the fornication of who? According to the book of Revelation chapter 13. The fornication of the harlot. That's right. The beast. Who reigned it? Came up out the sea. The Statue of Liberty is a symbol of the Queen of England coming out the sea. And if you go to count, you'll see seven horns on her head. They call it liberty. You know why they call it liberty? I'll tell you why. I pledge allegiance to the what? 
to the flag. Not to the country. I give allegiance to the flag. And that's not the American flag, that's the Confederate flag of the United States, which was 13 at the time. Right? The Confederate. I give allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. To the Republic. For which it stands. Where's the Democratic Party and the Socialist Party and all other parties? Where are they? Everybody in this country is being duped in the thinking that they're the Democratic Party and the country is ran by the Republicans. Always has been and always will be. And any Democrat that's in office is a sedate Republican. But the country says, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With who? With liberty. That's why she called liberty the statue of liberty. Doesn't the Bible say do not make any graven images and any likeness and any statues and any forms? Yet they call it the statue of liberty in what America refers to itself as a Christian country. An open declaration of polytheism or blasphemy against the first commandment. Don't be fooled. Not nowadays at least, because uh, the truth is here. All things got to go.